Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is time for more DoorDash LCO. It's bloody prime time for dinner. It's almost 8 p.m. So make sure you go in exclamation DoorDash in chat. Order yourself something scrumptious. And uh, make sure as well before we get into game number three, which is going to be Chiefs and Mammoth, go follow all the pros, all the players in the league, all the teams, and also at LCO as well. So you can see all the good stuff going on. And also send in your content. We want to see how you're watching the show. You know, with your feet up on the couch, or maybe if your missus doesn't approve of that, then put your feet back down, but sit up straight and watch the show. Uh, but take a picture <laughs> at LCO, send it up there so we can have a From the Fans segment with all you guys and your content. Now, uh, Skimmy. Yes. Did you have a champ that we wanted to try to guess the abilities of? I did, and I'm actually glad we got to my one because it, and I don't have to guess. Uh, I go. put the pressure on you guys, right? So <laughs> yeah. this is always fun for me. So we're going to start off with the passive, and um, the champion is Alawi. Mm -hmm. Oh my! <laughs> so, that's the silliest one. Dude. <laughs> you haven't me on. That is the silliest <laughs> so, one. I remember when I started this game, I saw that champion, and I thought that is a rowdy champion. I like what it offers. I like how uh, how crazy and misconstrued it could be with uh, some of its comparisons in other areas of life. But you know what? We're going to start off with that passive. What do we reckon, team? Tentacles. I ca ca can I tell you something? I genuinely have no idea. Like I can't even. I can't even begin to be in the same realm. Of a guess. It spawns <laughs> tentacles. Yes. I'm going to say the will of the ancients. Oh, you're not bad. The will of the deep. You're the... not bad. So you think ancients and you will maybe... Will of the kraken. No, no, no. Getting getting, getting colder. Think ancients. Think religious figures. Think uh, somebody you look gods. up to. Yes. Gods, one of the words. Goddess. Or no, God, gods. God is okay. the word. God is the word. You're looking up to an elder. Prayer of the gods. I'm literally guessing, by the way. God of Hail, the sea? Hail gods. So if you've got somebody that older than you, what would you call them? God of the elder. Yes, yeah, so elder god is the last elder part. God. It's something... Blessing of, of an, the elder god. Something, Kraken. something of an elder god. Kraken of the elder god. Elder no. god's tentacles. It's not blessing? It's not blessing, no. Oh. Is that a Soraka? That's Soraka. It begins oh, with P. Probably. begins with P. Power. Not power. Prayer? It's not prayer. Unfortunately, uh, no prize money went on that uh, question. Prophet okay. Prof of an elder oh, god. Oh, dude. No way. Yeah. That's the Look, last word I'm guessing know, when it comes bro. to tentacles know, and krakens. Okay, well, we're going to start with the Q now. Tentacle uh, slam. Very warm. Very, very close. Smash. Tentacle smash. Bingo. Slap. Yeah. Oh, that's a point okay. for Big Dog Rusty. Yeah. 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 Rusty, okay. he's, on, he's on two now. We'll, we'll do a quick score update while we're okay. halfway through. Uh, Jubes are on four points, and the rest of us are on two. Okay, so uh, thinking about how many experiences we literally just had, and the harsh reality of all of that, what is the W? <laughs> what is the W? What is, is she? That is that the leap forward? forward? It's the is little it? leap with the yeah, like little leap. The prophet tentacles. Tentacle flat. jump. Nah, it, it's something to do with the soul, right? Like soul steel or something no, to do with like. No, 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 that's the E. I can tell you the E. <laughs> yeah, so the W. You, you, you googled this. What? Me. Yeah, you're a Googler. <laughs> you're a dirty Googler. Hands Joel, off the keyboard. Can we get, can we get a hand check? <laughs> hands off the keyboard. Me, I can you take a your photo of my screen right them. now. I can. I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me okay. to? No, it's all right. I don't believe so, you. So if you've had, like, if you've done something and your mate's like, don't do that, bro. It's so dumb. It's so stupid, right? You've learned a... Lesson. Yeah, a lesson's harsh one lesson. part. There you go, mate. That's a W. Yeah. Beautiful. What was it? It's a harsh lesson. Ha do I get half a point for that? Because I said lesson. Uh, yeah, we can give some... <laughs> nah, it's alright. Give Rusty a half points. point. I'll give half <laughs> point. I'll give Jubes a half point. That'll okay. do. Okay, so the E, <laughs> Big Dog Rusty. Yeah, you already said it. Test of spirit. Oh, that's easy. It's just so, so easy. Okay. Blitzing through then. Finally, the ultimate. What's the ultimate called? <laughs> Unleash it. Jumps up into the air. Yeah, I mean. Slam, jam. Tentacle lifting. Seismic toss. Tentacle lifting. I like that. No? No. <laughs> I don't know this one. Well, I can just tell you that the final one, the ultimate, was called Leap of Faith. Oh, oh right. Uh, yeah. Probably actually the most normal out of them all. You know, if you said Assassin's Creed, I would have got it straight away. Oh. Can I tell you that there's literally no one in the world that plays this champion? <laughs> I, I, I love yes. this champion, but it just sucks at the moment. I first <laughs> this champion. I've tried to gank this champion and then found out that that's not what you want to do. So I just uh, move away. And then because, you leave uh, it. Yes. And then you win the game because it does nothing. Yes, that's very, The most very painful true. part is your tentacles get killed and you're like, oh, I'm just not a champion anymore. 
So, um, that happens. Oh. Well, gentlemen, uh, also, Skimmy, thank you very much for oh, the thank quiz. You. Uh, and after that, Jubes is still winning on four and a half, followed by Rusty with three and a half. And then Skimmy and I are both just on two. So uh, <laughs> our little pea brains are unable to get all the points yet. And again, another passive going without being guessed. So they seem to be the hardest I'm parts shocked. of everyone <laughs> remembering. Shocked. Passives are hard, man. They really are. Now, uh, something else that's hard is this game for Mammoth because Chiefs are playing out of their minds. This is literally top of the table versus bottom of the table right now. And it's going to be hard. So let's talk Chiefs first and talk what the recipe for success has been for them and... Juves, I'm going to throw the uh, the microphone to you. I feel like I've done the recipe of success for Chiefs for the last few few, few nights. Do you want to handball that one to Rusty? Well, Rusty, <laughs> grab that microphone. <laughs> I'll I'll handball it to you. I was just finishing the tea that I was making, oh, but I'll tell you about all the Chiefs recipes <laughs> of success while <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> Basically, the Chiefs have been playing really well through their jungler, getting all of his carry champions. They've got a lot of unique champions that no one else really plays, mm. uh, which is a big thing for the Chiefs because it's harder for teams to deal with it, right? It's not a known, it's not a consistency. Uh, and at the moment, even in their loss, honestly, in the last game that they did play, uh, which I believe was to Peace, they tracked extremely well where to be on the map. They just got played by their opponents, right? So they have a really good game sense. They know where to be. Their team fighting is solid. And it's the top side of the map for me that have been imp impressing uh, more than anything else. I think Liv's laning has been better and better every single week. Mm, he's certainly been impressing up in that top lane. And even just, you know, as you mentioned, the unique champions that they bring to the table are so damn exciting to watch in competitive play. Now, let's talk Mammoth. And Jubes, I was yeah. going to throw this to you. you. Do you want to take it? I'll, yeah, no, I've got the microphone. Just I just here. thought I did, I did so many Chiefs. It's only fair I, I don't do it anymore. But this team, where I see the advantages or where I see a way that they can maybe, you know, snag a win, it's with Goodo. Mm. Goodo's really got to pop off. And Frost needs to find the form that he had a couple weeks ago went with Shinky, right? Where he was putting up numbers that were just absurd. And we really thought this was the next coming of uh, double lift in, in Oath. But no, nah, nevertheless, like they, they really just need to have a consistent and solid early game because they actually show in skirmishes, they can go toe to toe with most teams in the LCO, right? Even this game against Auto, they had a lot of good moments when it came to the group. But unfortunately, they just found them, in, in most cases, they find themselves as, at a deficit, not through getting outplayed, but through some pretty silly errors, right? Or pretty lackluster de decision making. Yeah. And again, good old, uh, it's another solid performance from him. He's managing to, to steal the Baron. And you'd almost, you almost ask the question, and, and maybe this comes down to like a bit of luck. What if it wasn't an Ocean Soul? If it was just a Cloud, right, in this game? Yeah. Maybe, you know, they've managed to drag this one out and we're talking a different ball game. So again, just those one percenters for me for Mammoth. Well, what I want you to ask the players down on the side lanes is what their favorite soul is. And uh, I'm gonna let you do that. Well, I've got, uh, I've got Wei and Kisei, so the two people who will be duking it out in the mid lane. Uh, Kisei, I'm going to start with you first. And I'm just going to say, I watched your, your K guessing video. You got one champion, right? So that was unlucky. But uh, how's, how's it feeling being uh, top of the ladder, top of the, near the top of the table, or maybe top now? How's it feeling? Yeah, it's feeling good. It's, it's feeling pretty good. Like, I don't, I don't think this ladder really matters because we just want to win the whole thing. But yeah, it just it feels good, man, to be a rookie and be at the top. Yep. And, and Wei, uh, obviously, you know, you've been close and it feels like, you know, in most weeks there's a, there's a game where it's, it's, it's just the one percenters that are letting you down. Uh, how are you feeling again about coming up against the Chiefs and where do you think kind of, you know, you're going to be able to take this one away or win this game? Um, I think this is obviously going to be probably like the hardest one just because of how um, Chiefs can draft, right? Like they have their entire top side can basically flex like every single champion in like their respective roles. And then like you got the bot lane with like a lot of like wacky picks like Mundo support or like Heimerdinger, right? So uh, it's just going to be whatever happens in draft really. We'll just have to see uh, the interesting stuff. And so you do have interesting stuff ready for them? Is that what you're saying? Uh, like, kinda. Yeah, I guess. Kinda. I, I, I guess, mm -hmm. Kisei, to you now, does that concern you a little bit? Like, if a team if a team says, you know, they got some cheesy stuff that's gonna come on out, are you more just, don't even care what they're gonna pick? Or is it just, I'm solely focusing on my job? We don't really care. 
just, that's all you, that's all you're gonna give me kisai after everything we've been through that's you're just gonna give me that yeah <laughs> All right, well, uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining me. Uh, follow Kisei on TikTok, follow Wei on Twitter, and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys on Summoner's Rift. See you there. Peace. That's all you're going to get. He did your dirty jeeves up, man. He did, huh? Like, I know. Yeah. he left you I, in that awkward position. Like, cool, man. Thanks for that. Mate, I, I knew this kid growing up, mentored him, <laughs> taught him what it was like to be a pro player. Like, this is the life you want. I said, go for it. You know, I, 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 he is here, top of the LCO now, and then he's just like to me, yeah, all good, man. So, and then it's almost like, why is the camera on me? He just hit you with like a who? Like, oh, yeah. why am I talking to this guy? Yeah, and, I, and I full shout out his TikTok as well, at the end of it, by the way. Ah, good on you. Good on you for doing that. We do want everyone at home to go and follow all the players, all the teams, you know, everyone, including at LCO. And, you know, it's, it's all about the numbers. You know, you've got to lift them up. They'll play better, probably. So if you're a big fan <laughs> of some players, go follow them but don't unfollow the other ones because you still need the content in your feed it's all about the content at the end of the day uh and let's talk about predictions now let's see which way we've swung with this one i dare say i'm going to see a lot of blue and white here just going for the favorites as it is such a uh top of the table bottom of the table battle today i'm interested to see what twitch chat do if people are gonna tank it again and try to make that 1919 because that could happen next week if it keeps going the way it's going because they are certainly not picking the favourites at the moment. Or well, maybe they are picking the favourites and, you know, it's just constant underdogs. But who knows at this point? Anyway, Rusty, you know, tell me what's going on with your pick there. I mean, it's hard to pick against the Chiefs in a game like this. You know, you said this all through the week. You look at the games that are coming up today. This is the only one that you could, in theory, write off as like a known quantity yep. uh, and say that Chiefs are definitive favourites, right? Where every other game today is more up in the air, right? Even with Legacy and Order playing in game four of the day, it's hard to pick for certain. So... Just full faith in Chiefs, and I think their consistency will be enough to get over the line of any cheese that Mammoth throws. Well, I'll tell you what everyone at home is going to be very excited to hear. Champ Select's ready, so you don't have to listen to us ramble on any longer. Here you go, Mammoth and Chiefs is the draft. Let's kick it off with that draft. Everybody is going the way of Chiefs. We'll get to see what the viewers at home think here, Rusty. But it's hard to bet against them at this stage. Sure, they had the loss against Peace, but for the most part, they have been the most dominant team in the LCO. Yeah, and they've kicked this off with a very interesting start to the draft as well here, Skimmy. Both Lulu and Karma banned on the blue side of the rift with a very high priority for Gwen. Uh, not something that we have seen today. Usually the Karma and the Lulu either shared bands, uh, so one team bans one apiece, or you have them both picked. Yep. Uh, but this time around, both banned by Chiefs. High priority in a champion we haven't seen today in the Gwen, uh, which does make sense. Swaith was a prolific Gwen jungle in his game against the Diwolves. Multiple quadra kills, I believe, as well. Uh, so definitely a flexible pick for them. Certainly is, and uh, we've seen what the Chiefs can do with it. Whether or not Lyft is proficient on the champion, we'll get to find out. He's played it once, and, uh, oh sorry, uh, Swaif has played it once, but we'll get to see if Lyft can play it uh, as well, as a lot of these champions will be flexible in that nature. Viego locked in uh, with the Diana, currently sitting in the meta as a jungler. That means that you're now looking at it being a top or a mid laner to deal with. Ezreal going to be the champion of choice here for Mboma. I like the early priority in the draft towards his champion pool. Uh, Ezreal also opens up the tanks potentially for someone like Dragku. Uh, also does still mean that you know, Dragku is a Soraka style player. So never discount that as a, a realistic possibility for them. Ooh. And you're not going to see lived on Gwen this time around, Skibby. Doesn't seem to be the case. He's played top lane Mundo before, as has Biopanthers, so a few of the connoisseurs in the region. If I heard correctly though, did you hear from why did they mention Mundo support? Is that what I heard? Or was that just my audio breaking up? Because if that is the case, that's a little bit spicy. I think Mundo support could be a thing. I would much prefer it with like a center, but I can see it working with an Ezreal. I, th the changes to Mundo haven't impacted much in the way that I would say he is a support champion, however. I, because realistically, the biggest change is the E, which just gives him more movement speed. Yeah. Uh, sorry, more wave clear, not movement speed. Uh, so that doesn't necessarily play into the hands of a support Mundo. Uh, so be it, if that's the way that it goes, I can see Dragu playing tanks down there for sure. <laughs> He'll pretty much play anything. What I really do like is the fact that Chiefs banned away the Ziggs and locked in the Ezreal. Sure, we know that Emboma is very good at it, but the Ziggs seems to be a pretty solid answer uh, against it. Both being skill shot reliant champions gives Smurf that easy access to play a strong early game, siege up and find some success to try and play into what Jews is mentioning, right? About those 1% is maybe fights or 
uh, overarching themes just going in their favor. Instead, though, Wei's running it back. This is how I kind of introduced him coming into this uh, into the split. I think his first game was against the Chiefs, and they played the uh, Vayne, but they played it with a Tom Kench. Now, this is 11-13, so Tom Kench is no longer the same champion, so we're going to see a different matchup this time around. Yeah, very different champion is the old Tom Kench. And a couple things here for Mammoth when we look at their draft completed. Viego, clearly a strong champion. Diana is the good old champion that we know, right? That's the one where he took it to peace and almost won the game for Mammoth through his own hands. Uh, and looking at mid, if this is a Lucian ban to go with the Yasuo, then they are limiting a lot of the strengths of Wei, who has seemed to have been only really successful when he gets the Lucian. He's still struggling to find that consistency, as you mentioned. But two games in the Lucian so far, and definitely put uh, a lot of good work on it. Let's see what his response is, though, because the Brahm came on through, so preventing Mammoth looking just to lock in place multiple members of the Chiefs. I think they're set now. Okay. And that's going to be locked in place, so still another champion that can be flexed, but if you're looking at a pairing with the Vayne, would that be the one that springs to mind? I don't think that set will be the champion that goes with the vein too much. I, I would expect that Nectar is going to be playing the set top lane. Yeah. I, most likely into the Dr. Mundo matchup, but we will see how flexible that just happens to be. I, as far as I'm concerned, Mundo has an okay time up there regardless, but it does seem like we're going to be getting the Mundo in the bottom lane. Just based yeah. off this, unless it's Wukong mid. Still many predictions. The beauty of Kuden and what he puts together. We saw what happened when he had a trend in the top lane. We've seen wild and wacky things before, and we might just be getting a little bit of that once again. The LeBlanc is confirmed. No doubt that's what Kisse is going to be rocking, a champion that continues to pop up. It was a highlight from the top of show, and it just gives you so much poke and just an overall nuisance on the map. Yeah, and most importantly, Skimmy, it gives setup for your jungler, right, to get into the mix and actually make plays. Gwen is someone who is so reliant on having set up from your lanes if you want to make ganks successful. So they've gone for a Wukong, they've gone for a LeBlanc. I think that's brilliant as far as the 2v2s and the skirmishes go for the side of the Chiefs. Uh, and looking at their bottom lane, it is an absurd amount of poke. Uh, one of my favorite old school lanes in League, Skimmy, is the Blitzcrank and the Ezreal. Uh, but the replacement to that in this game is going to be Mundo. However, they function in a similar way, where you'll have Ezreal standing outside of the lane, like towards the river, potentially, and Mundo in the bushes, and they both just throw skill shots inward, right, and try and win their poke battle through that. Uh, Vayne, obviously a pretty low range AD carry, can be quite susceptible to the poke. Uh, and Thresh, quite an all-rounder champion, right, and still 100% can be poked out of that lane. So Chiefs going all in on their poke down in bottom lane with heavy skirmishing on the top side of the map. Checks out, it's a Chiefs comp. Certainly is. The composition that wants to fight and wants to showcase what they can do. Mammoth, on the other hand, though, have definitely got a lot of engaging tools, a lot of abilities to kind of uh, check that box and come at you. And if they can find those individual 1v1s, then Frost is certainly in a position to accelerate and pop off as the vein, right? Definitely doesn't want to go in a standard 5v5, wants to pick those battles in separate situations and play around it and, and find quote unquote resets like a Viego would in that regard. But uh, you can see the win cons as clear as mud on either side. but. I'm still so curious about this Mundo support. Yes, the passive is quite strong, right? The fact that, you know, you need to be CC'd to break the passive. The lifesteal is there if you can get it from the canister. I'm imagining you're just going to go for a Q build with the um, Arcane Comet, right? And just as you say, full invest in poking this fresh shout and saying you can't play the game. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely what I would expect to see from him. Uh, Comet, definitely a viable option in that regard. Uh, you could go Guardian, right? If you're looking to just be super safe, but Comet makes the most sense. Do as much damage as you can. Uh, I haven't actually looked at Mundo's ratio since the rework and if it's changed at all, but I was a big fan of the magic penetration Mundo, where you hit, you wouldn't do it in competitive, but you go Sorcerer's Shoes and just smack everybody. The first cleaver that you hit does so much damage, it's not funny. Uh, it could be a pretty influential factor, but nevertheless, uh, looking at their opponents here as well in Mammoth, old Gudo has to put in a lot of work in this game to make it work himself, uh, but he's got the champion to do it. We know what he's capable of certainly does, and he's done it time and time again, right? He's been a welcome addition to this roster and to the LCO as a whole. Definitely adding to his CV of a player to watch for the future. But here we go for the third game of the night. It's Soup Week, it's Friday. It's Chiefs taking on Mammoth. And we're not going to have a coach interview for this one, so it is just going to be us talking through the rare early game discussions uh, that we actually get to watch unfold here. 
as we pan out onto the rift. Just a lot of standard, really, across the board. It's a shame we don't get the level 1 strategies in this one. Uh, Draco, I believe, at a glance, has gone for Mr. Mundoverse, which makes sense for the gym addict. Uh, even though he's in lockdown with two weeks away from it, he's going to pretend he's at the gym on the rift. Look at those biceps and dumbbells that he throws. Of course, Draco is <laughs> going for this skin. <laughs> It is the Comet, like you mentioned. Uh, also Ignite uh, for Draco down there. So much more of a kill lane for both supports. The Ignite for Thresh makes sense. You're against a Mundo. Good observation, though, on the skin choice. I'm sure he's feeling the frustration. We talked about it last time they played around. Sort of angry gaming of being in lockdown. Well, no doubt he's going to play a champion that uh, I'm sure he associates himself with. Would rather be there. That is going to be, no doubt, popping off with a bit of a flexible pick here. We talk about cheese if Mammoth were thinking it off their end, but uh, this is one that I'm sure has been curated in the lands of solo queue. Just a really solid poke lane. We'll see how he plays it out beyond just a level one, because that's the obvious quantity for us, right? He's against a Thresh in a vein, so if a Thresh hook hits Mundo, bad luck to the Thresh, because it does nothing. Uh, and Vayne doesn't have any kind of pot shot crowd control that you can just throw out. It is more committal with the Condemn. Uh, high mana cost on that one as well. So you're not yeah. just going to throw that out randomly to pop his passive. So it does mean that Draco has a pretty free run of sitting in the bushes, right? And being hyper aggressive. And a lot of the lane wards, remember, a lot of the wards will be in lanes. But Goodo's found Swayth. He has. He's already got a blue buff, but looking to try and steal one away. Goodo going to hit the smite, get some life back, and then dash away to the Grom. He's down low. And thankfully for him, his bot lane were already underneath their turret. So they were quick to rotate and quick to back him up. Swayf will continue the counter jungle. Draco hits another dumbbell just on the backside there of the turret to let him know, keep him humble. And he was really just looking for Gudo, right? To make Swayf's clear on this Gromp confirmed and successful. Uh, it will be. So while the blue buff was smited away, it's actually a pretty big biff. That's a really big myth. Look at the trade. Even after the clone to try and disengage away, the Haymaker to his dome is going to force Liv to uh, consider his next choice. Liv's next choice is most likely going to be a forced reset. Next time not having resources means that he's free to just continue to stay in that lane with the advantage he has. Uh, and once again, you know, you're seeing Mammoth only able to place wards in lane. Gives so much freedom to someone like Swaith, you know, with the invade that we just saw from him to get to that blue buff above and up tempo. Uh, Swayth now looking mid. Yeah, here he is. Uh, but his response, Goodo coming back. He's going to look to try and dash in. Not level six, but can't Moonfall, but can definitely put out a sizable amount of DPS as they stun. charge on towards him. That's going to be first blood. That's going to be them picking up the kill. And that's going to be Wei that finds himself the first blood, but not before Chiefs can answer back. Yeah, Wei stuck in the Gwen form. No way out of that one. Good teleport from Lived and great trade from them. But still, it was the first kill that goes the way of this Viego and is very influential in the way that lane is going to go because it means you get much closer to your Merc treads faster and much closer to a safer time in your lane than you otherwise would have. But Lived comes in clutch there for the side of Chiefs. He does. And he hit the bonus TP to go for that. So now the ball is on the court here for Nectar to decide how he wants to use his. Might just be waiting to hit level six and a contest over an, uh, a major objective. We've seen a lot from the uh, social media that these men have played saying, we'll be getting a win today. They've repeated that same narrative for a few days now. <laughs> it's it's your been hope. about four weeks and four days, I believe. <laughs> just you really do hope. You really do hope <laughs> that they can chalk up a win. They got a single win in split one. They'll be no doubt really, really keen to try and uh, beat that record for split number two. But the odds are certainly against them in this matchup today. But if Would they can find some situations like this, then positive signs. Would you compare it to the UK saying it's coming home or? Oh, look, mate, I've Would ruined. You? I've absolutely ruined my sleeping schedule for that one. <laughs> and I don't know with the English. Being one myself, sometimes it's a little bit uh, delirious. Oh, you heard it here first, Mammoth. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he's talking <laughs> about England. You can see some stats from Shinky here on your screen as well. Well timed as a segue. Uh, two games on it. Thresh had a 15% win rate, I will add, before that last game. Uh, bringing it back up a little bit is a Decoy, and Shinky looking to continue that trend. It was a curse, but the curse was lifted. So maybe they've actually found Valhalla. We have, but Shinky at this stage has only found uh, pain and suffering because in terms of his ability to be offensive, what can he really contribute to this lane right now? He's got a vein that just wants to farm. 
They've got two poke oriented champions to deal with that are basically having a field day because they know that Shinky can't respond. Surely just playing and hoping that laning phase is over ASAP. Yeah, you simply exist, I think, in that bottom lane and, and look to scale. Frost, Vayne is one of those signature picks. I remember you sent me highlights of Frost before he joined the league. Yeah. From the challenger scene, playing Vayne. So it's a champion that is familiar to him. And I think we all... That is an ultimate. But it certainly is an ultimate. The wave pushing against him. But it's the Cyclone. There's the R2 of it. It's the Suplex is used to try and disengage away into the willing arms of Guda, who picks up a snack. It's a freebie. That really was just a free kill. Mammoth will be laughing about that one. It was a wide flank from Swayth on his Gwen, but it's a set. And if there is ever a champion on League of Legends that you don't want to even attempt a 1v2 against, set is high on that list. Definitely in the top three champions. Turns it around very easily. Flash ultimate covers even extra distance. Basically gets Swayth under turret. And remember, it is a flashless Gwen because they often run an offensive summoner besides the smite. An easy pickup and good at right place, right time, of course. Able there to be a part of the kill and make sure they snag that one. Ooh. It connects, and it's not actually going to be successfully buffered away now, so Emboma could be in a fair bit of trouble. Ignite is committed. He flashes away, so double sums used as Draco looks to try and continue to fight. Flashes on his head and hits him with the barbell. A ton of damage in his face, and Draco gets a kill. Yeah, Draco literally just flexes over him and takes him down. They're chasing Emboma. They're looking for the Ezreal. The E was used, yes. The follow-up was fine from Shinky, but not being level 6 makes it really hard to convert a good hook into a kill. And they didn't just take the advantageous trade. And, you know, if you're not hitting a Mundo and he's hitting you, you are most likely dying. It's getting a little bit athletic at the moment. Top lane, they were doing the long jump. Bot lane, they're doing, uh, what do you want to say, squats. But definitely... Uh, they're figuring a little bit rowdy about it so far as uh, Swayth decides, well, enough is enough. We're going to now do the dragon. Going to remove the Infernal Drake off the menu. And it might now be a bit of a jungler's playground with so many summoners having, having to basically globally be burnt. With no mana here, just kind of poking his head in and just keeping Widow accountable. Uh, Swayth also going to be super low after taking the objective, so... It is realistically just going to be a trade to reset here, most likely. Uh, Raptors to reset is the outcome for Swaith, I would imagine. Uh, he's got a full topside jungle to clear as well. Wei is, I'm going to say, is vigilant of that, but he's actually just placed a ward to keep himself safe in mid lane instead. Nectar's certainly not shy for a bit of a biff right now. This time, going to use his ultimate aggressively. Cyclone interrupts the placement of that Haymaker. Now, maybe Lift has the edge, but his jungler is here. Guda once again offering protection to the top half of the map. Very if they spotted. can find a kill, they got a Herald. about to smack him. Oh. Yeah. That's out of the bush. Herald could be summoned just for some plate gold, I think, because Lived is pressured, no ultimate. Swayth nearby, but yet again, zero health to his name until the Gromp is confirmed. Not having the best goal of it so far on this Gwen jungle, especially at a 0-2 deficit. And Guda's walked over the same ward twice, Gimme. Hasn't been able to clear it. Second time around, of course, had the Herald. So if he has Sweeper, he's not going to be able to use that one. Uh, and only now resets with Control Woods. But the Ward has done its job. It has died of natural causes. So plus two to live there on a good Ward place. Still plenty of time before he needs to use that. No pressure. But it has been very hard for him to gank bot side, given the amount of pressure that both Emboma and Draco have put their way. You mentioned it very early on into the laning phase, the positioning of the Mammoth Wards, the open avenue that it meant for Sway, for anybody really from the side of Chiefs to then target. But Actually, for the most part, they've just been quite content, just flat out winning 2v2. Yeah, 100%. And I think they would continue to do so, right? If Mammoth are placing all their wards for their lane, then it's hard for Gudo to exist. Uh, that's actually kind of true in mid lane as well. Uh, there's two control wards around mid, but none of it's about clearing their opponents. It's about keeping themselves safe. Uh, the only place that's really been combative is top lane. And even then, Lived has good ward placement to counteract that of Gudo. So, as it stands, you know, if this game didn't have Swayth ganking and being counter ganked, it could have been a bigger lead for the Chiefs, right? Just from organic laning and clearing minions with the advantages that they have in lane alone. Uh, and Gudo's got such a hard job of it to even find a successful gank, the way that Mammoth placed their vision around the rift.
quickly looking at that mini map. The bottom half of this is just completely lit up. Chief's blue. Swafe exists. Look at the gank angle. He can't go through his blue side jungle. There's wards everywhere. He's looking to counter the LeBlanc, who they saw move on vision. Uh, but of course, goes back mid now. Goodo looking. You could maybe lantern gank through. Yep. All the while, though, this is time wasted, and Swafe is taking full control of this as a result. You can look at the score sheet as the showstopper comes out, and all in between these two, oh. the haymaker, the flashes, the outplay is left, turns it around. And he gets the kill, and the ego check is complete. Yeah, I actually think so. While the flash W was a great attempt from Nectar, it was actually quite telegraphed and quite obvious. So as long as Lived had his own flash available, he countered him. A nice little play from the Wukong, right? He's the one who starts the fight with his ultimate first to use the R button. Initiates the play, gets the kill, gets the solo 1v1. Could have been better for Nectar, however, with a different placement on his Haymaker. Might have been singing a different story. They've been going at it for the entirety of this game. Always juggling around with very low HP resources. Oh, this could be a fight here as well. Herald needs to be summoned, so it's top lane. Kise spots them. Kise looking for it, forcing out a very early flash here from Gudo. Now is he going to look to try and re-engage the miss goes down from Gwen. The needlework comes out and just evaporates Nectar. He's literally just TP back. But he's a non-factor. The Moonfall's committed to a support Mundo. There's the gank attempt on the Kisa who can't distort enough times away to safety and will fall on down to fresh. Way has become the LeBlanc, and as a proficient mid lane player, he will make light work of it, but it's Shinky that picks up a double kill. He's stolen the resources away from his own team's carries. That's so amazing. When Way becomes Dragku as well, he gets the Relic Shield stacks and is able to steal two minions in top lane. So a bit of extra money oh, <laughs> into true. people's pockets. Pockets, why not be super efficient? Uh, but nice little play as a turnaround from Mammoth more than anything else. Nectar is definitely dead to rights with how slow, uh, with how fast, sorry, Chiefs get to the fight, but Wei and Shinky in the area, they're able to find the stun onto Kise, Gudo just buying time, but he's stuck fighting the impossible, right? It's a Mundo by himself. And Draco able to just walk away. But Wei transforms, gets the reset, correct target selection this time around. Book dashed away from, but I mean, that was just a difference of members right there. That was Wei getting into the fight and having a bigger influence. He was, and he'll need more fights like that to try and hit the same highs that we just saw before from Chaz's Viego. Get a few kills, a few scrappy fights, a few resets. It's very much a winning situation, but hang on a minute. The Dragon's being picked up, two separate fights on the left-hand side. Kisser going for gold, looking to try and take out Gudo. True shot barrage. Won't be enough to follow things up there and snipe away that kill. And just an overall look at the game state right now. Both junglers basically identical in their items, barring the bit of extra farm there for Sway, so he's netted the Leeching Leer. Uh, looking at top laners, however, you know, you wouldn't think back to this game where Nectar hits a sick flash ultimate and just ruins Sway's life under his own turret. He got nothing from that play, but bottom. Reku's in trouble. He's going to need to pop that ultimate in just a second right now. Look, I try and burn through the mitigation, but the ignite, even without it, doesn't seem to matter. Now, can they turn their attention on towards Shinky? Can both supports fall on down nice and early? They can. Kiss, they picks it up. Now, a case between both AD carries fighting from afar, but Frost is just deleted. A non factor. Chief's just too clean. Yeah, I mean, Swayth does so much damage in that fight as well. That was a really huge fight for the jungler of the Chiefs, and Boma pretty much untouched through most of it as well. Nice early kill. Goodo is caught. Is he caught to death? Yeah, he is. <laughs> that just felt so slow and painful. <laughs> like, I wanted to let that sit there for a second. You are watching a LeBlanc auto attack a man to death. Oh, it feels bad, man. I mean, he gets it done. Uh, top, I mean, we're used to seeing this at a certain point. We'll stop play by playing it. They're just fighting. Uh, but back to that bottom play, you can see the merit of Vayne, Skibby, but beyond the kill of the Mundo. Just nothing really left to provide or damage that he can deal against the rest of the team was just made to suffer. Then he was. They'll need a little bit more time on their side to try and power themselves up to continue to play at this kind of pace. Because as it stands right now, some of these solo laners are uh, getting a little bit out of control. There's Luden's Tempest here from Kiss. They're going to help with that burst that we've seen so commonly throughout this game. But they've, the Divine Thunder are now doing wonders with the Sheen procs. Just dismantle this turret and find Chiefs their first of the game. 
Well, literally in the driver's seat on the top half of the map now is the Chiefs. Bottom lane is doing very well for themselves, but still being pressured. Uh, Gudo now going to work his way into the bottom, just using spells to get attack speed for the turret. Still the pressure exists, Chiefs. This is not unfamiliar territory for them, seeing the weak side of bottom lane. Uh, Kise about to say, how do you do? Yeah, she a little Kiora across the wall. Pats in the back, but there's Viego. Ton of life still built in there, so if he can get a chance to go up to this wave, then maybe he can do uh, wonders to it. Not going to be anywhere near as easy now to try and pat it from the minions, or if he has to backpedal back to his own camp. He might not even get a chance. He may just be dead to right. See if the ultimate is committed to disengage away, because the needlework was right on his head. I mean, Wei just emotes, knows that he wants the cat, and both mid laners play a game. And Wei comprehensively loses the game that he tries to play. That cannon was not worth it. Has to go back to base. And the turret is gone. So big win once again for the Chiefs. Kise just showing that he's got what it takes to be up with the best LeBlancs in the league. He does. Look at that CS lead now, Rusty. Soon to be a 50 CS gap. We're halfway towards the Flame Horizon. The famed accolades. Just how lane dominant you are. And if you have a quick stock check on the left-hand side of your screen, just look at the gold diff. Yeah, four members of the Chiefs, uh, well and truly in the top four when it comes to gold. Uh, Dragku, the only one who is suffering, but I suppose he is a Mundo. Uh, and I don't think Mundo's ultimate has such insane breakpoints. Actually, I'm going to confirm this for myself. But the old Mundo had really nutty breakpoints with levels. I'm guessing because of the changes to Mundo's ultimate, uh, it's not as big a necessity, which might be why Mundo can survive in the role. Yeah, it's still big, but it's not as reliant on having the levels. The way they change Mundo's ultimate for everyone as well, who doesn't play the champion, which is most of us, is that it's more effective when you're low health, because it restores a flat amount of your missing health. Uh, where the old Mundo just gave you like... 100% of your health over time. So yeah. you can be a support Mundo with less resources and make it work. Don't be making it work at the moment. It's that top lane again. It's that all in again. And it's lived. That finds another kill. Next star. Gonna cop some damage of his own accord. And Skimmy, we're definitely at that point in the game now, right? It's only 6,000. He says knowing that that's almost insurmountable already. Uh, but we're watching a team that is, you know, tied for first in the league against the team that is last place right now. And just seeing a little bit of a difference in individual caliber shine through. Here we are right now. Another dragon has been picked up. This time in favor of Chiefs. Over this game will go to a soul point. We're yet to see mid laners and top laners do battle on opposite sides of the map. The pressure, it's... Uh, yep. It's visible. I think we all saw that one coming except for Nectar. Flash still at the ready. Definitely not in a place to step up there. Uh, also is running. We haven't seen... I don't think we've seen a set in uh, the LCO since the patch. Uh, he is still going for the Stride Breaker. No longer has the dash on it, however. So a lot of the utility that existed there for set. You know, repositioning of your ultimate. Uh, just being able to get in range, first of all, to hit your face breaker. Uh, not going to be there this time around, but it is still the 90% slow yeah. uh, on the stride breaker, which is quite gross. More flash reliant, I would say, set is on this patch. I think that's really the strength of them on this patch now, is uh, the fact that, as you say, you can flash stride breaker or ult stride breaker and pretty much clump everybody up. And uh, serve them on a silver platter for the rest of your team to try and do... Justice with. Kraken Slay for Frost would make sense in any other game, but at this stage, I wonder if the Immortal Shield Bow would have been a little bit more uh, beneficial to try and survive the very fed members coming at you. I mean, I tell you what, it, it kills the Vay, uh, it kills the Mundo. Not a lot else. Lived has everything up here. He's got a Flash, he's got a Cyclone. He's got the clone. He's just going to turn around. 1v3, he doesn't care. He's a man on a mission. A man that knows his numbers. And this is the Chiefs playing with full force, full confidence, executing and outplaying. I mean, the hook hits from Shinky. The, the box wasn't necessary. It even flays him out of the box damage. So he just goes back to his distort. Uh, and again, 
I don't want to sound like a broken record, but we are seeing a comprehensive outclassing here just in terms of player skill. Uh, Mammoth clearly desperate in the plays that they're making and, and what they're looking for. So it was a 1v3 attempt in top lane, but the teleport's just there from Sway, uh, from Chiefs. It's measured, and now Sway and the Chiefs hit Baron. Baron has spawned, and Mammoth are going for a blind check to see if they can put up a fight for this one. So far, Frost has already burnt that flash down to 50%. The Moonfall comes out, finds nothing. True shot barrage is there. His sway is single-handedly still going for the Baron. He's getting lower and lower about a second as he gets close to the smite range. If Mammoth had to put up a contest, there's a flash from Wei, but look at to try and take out Lift. They've removed one Baron buff, but that's all she wrote. Yeah, Swaith just barely keeping his health up enough to not have to smite early. Uh, we'll be able to secure the Baron buff for the Chiefs. Mammoth going to try and push for this mid lane outer turret, but Emboma is here, and he is still a threat, as you can see. And he's going to be able to deter even that. There is not even a 1v3 situation right now where Mammoth have felt supremely confident. What I will say, as Gudo just okay. dies, uh, is that Shinky has been hitting his hooks. Uh, unfortunately, has been stealing kills as well, but th he's been hitting his hooks. And I think that has mechanically been quite impressive from the support of Mammoth. It's just that there's nothing really that eventuates from this. Uh, and this will be a part of most likely the, uh, the pretty abysmal win rate that Fresh has in the LCO. Well, it does really feel like the Chiefs playground so far. They're very close hitting that uh, covered a 10k gold lead in their favor. Another two minutes of this Baron buff remain as they are crashing three lanes at once. And why wouldn't you, knowing how strong you are? How individually ahead you are. Two levels in the jungle. Three levels, or two levels now, in the solo lanes. Even be found in the bot lane as well. So they will take fights all day long. The rest of this game really is just chilling for the Chiefs. Their 1 3 1 is entirely possible. You put Kise and lived in the same lane, and I have a feeling that they have the potential to 2v5. With the Void Staff completed, there is definitely a lot of scaling for Kise going towards his third item also. Uh, but a 4-0 Wukong with the Sterax online, pretty uh, pretty difficult for any one person to deal with. Probably impossible for any two people to deal with. And I think he could handle three. Get out with his life. So that's why I'm thinking there is a real world chance where if I was the Chiefs, use the Baron buff, put Kise lived in the same lane, and just... Slam the door down. Or kick it, whatever you prefer. <laughs> whatever your mode of analogy is. <laughs> Politely open the door. Yeah, just knock three times. The base is crumbling. Another dragon. Five turrets destroyed now. Synchronized waves soon to be between mid and bot and do the classic pressuring of an inhibitor. There are only 10 seconds remain of this Baron buff, so can they try and sneak one in? Boma's going to be able to hit this one untouched, so yep, they are way on a flank, but I don't know if that is the flank that he wants. And he's going to change his mind and walk back towards middle. There we go. Good as that, enough. He just jumps in like that. He gets exhausted straight away. Might just be removed from the fight afterwards. Nectar goes in the shield, expires. The grit is gone, but he finds one. There's a shutdown. Frost finds the kill of his own. He needed that. He's still up and alive. Look at to try and run people down in the night with the passive ticking. He's forced to disengage and deal with these uh, minion waves crashing in towards their two open inhibs. I mean, that's a good fight for Mammoth. At this point in the game, any fight that you have where you're getting gold is a good fight. Uh, and as it stands, right, mid lane and bot lane both lose their turrets respectively. Uh, they are now both open to be attacked by the side of the Chiefs, but Baron subsides. The fight was forced by Gudo, and ultimately it does end up being successful and favorable for them in a two-for-one manner. Battle starts. Gudo jumps in initially, but it's the follow-up afterwards that really starts to make it a favorable trade for them. Yeah, it's the CC lock onto Swayth. Uh, the Gwen hasn't been having the best time uh, so far in this one. Uh, has been pretty heavily targeted, still doing plenty of work. Not discrediting the pick by any means, but that has been the point of focus for most of Mammoth. And getting the resets, right? That's the name of the game. If you get 
someone killed. You get Viego taking that person. Well, then you actually have a chance, pretty much with any gold difference, to maybe win the fight if it's a priority target that dies. Well, if you're a member fan, you're well and truly on the Frost hype train. He's a single member on that gold graph, flying the banner for success and late game potential. A few kills there. A few chances to showcase those mechanics. To battle with one of the best teams currently in the league. Got himself three core component items that can really, well, given enough time, output a sizable amount of damage to pretty much anyone. Yeah, it's, it's a big three items. Uh, the Wit's End helps a little bit to navigate around the fact that he's gone for the Kraken Slayer over the Shield Bow, but at the same time, there is an Ezreal and a Wukong that can absolutely annihilate your health bar. So the requirement for Frost to play just pixel perfect uh, is extremely high. The Frost does have the money for it, has the Thresh Lantern to help a little bit. And looking at the crowd control that exists from the Chiefs, extremely limited. There is a world where the three item vein wins a team fight, becomes a four item vein, and then can actually just team fight for all the Mammoth, put them on his back. Not highly likely, there are 10,000 gold down still, but at least it's there. Question becomes, when will he be able to showcase what this power spike looks like for him? Because there is a Baron spawning in five seconds, a soul point, just over 90. And a teammate of his that has just died in the side lane, unfortunately. Yeah, stopwatch available for Wei, chooses not to use that one. Flash available for Wei, still once again chooses not to use that one either. Uh, he's 1 and 5 now, unfortunately, on this Viego. And top lane, pretty much free to take. Uh, and in that same vein, there is three open inhibitors that they could consider pursuing. May just get the Baron, confirm the obvious there. Right, 20 seconds without the mid laner of Mammoth might be enough time to just take the Baron for free. Uh, and then really, even in a 5v5, I don't think you actually stopped them from just taking three inhibitors with this Baron buff. Might just be the perfect game here, Rusty. As Kise plays Goalkeeper and, well, Scoring for lack goals. of an objective, uh, destroys Shinki. They're now going to look for another kill. Frost in a bit of a 1v2 angle, We're looking to try and showcase this mechanic. Get bopped in a hit by the Wukong as Lived is unstoppable. But can he survive? Will he grant way a reset? He's surviving for the meantime. The triumph is OP. The sustain of a Divine Thunder is that much better. And Chiefs get an ace. Yeah, look, Mammoth are choosing to take the fight, and we spoke about it. It's a wit's end vein that's not going to save you from the physical damage that comes out of a Wukong and just hits him with the monster polearm slap and just picks him apart. Frost tries his best. Not going to be enough. Mammoth, unfortunately, not able to keep up with the Chiefs, not able to dance with the best in our league this time around. They had their moments, but moments aren't enough to deal with a team like the Chiefs, convincingly getting their seventh win of the split. And overall, never really looks like losing there, right? There was a couple of moments where you start to find hope if you're a Mammoth fan. You've got the, the fight in top lane. You've got the counter gank in mid lane as well. Uh, Swayth starts off 0-2, and two, uh, and Gudo starts off picking up those kills. And if you want to write the recipe for success for Mammoth Rights, Gimme, you would probably say start with giving Gudo Diana, start with giving him kills. It's just unfortunately the rest of it crumbled so quickly after those kills happened. Certainly did. And uh, Mac, as much as we hype up Gudo and how, how well he can pop off, when the vision was denied, he was left with a very passive attention of, well, how do I gank some of these lanes? Because you saw it in the bot lane, he was sitting pretty in the, uh, in the bush waiting for a lantern to try and gank. Yeah, there was a few times. He was using his flash so liberally as well, just to get out of dangerous situations and then try to re-engage. But then after that, maybe just didn't have the movement to get back in. Just a lot going on. And he certainly was one of the win conditions there for Mammoth. But, you know, just in that top lane, Nectar did not have a good time. And you guys mentioned it during the cast, you know, the uh, stride breaker, just not what it used to be. No sticking power with the step there, no real engagement. And it just makes it that much, that much harder to be the bruiser that Set was in uh, patch 11.12. So maybe that's why we haven't seen too much set in the last week. So I guess that was a good test. And I don't know if anyone else is going to really follow that. But I guess we'll see going forward. However, Chiefs looking dominant as expected in this matchup. There was a couple of shaky moments. But towards the end, it just looked like it was that skill gap that we all kind of expected 
going into the game, Rust. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of moments, of course, where we can celebrate Mammoth's potential uh, in this game. Some early skirmishes, a couple of team fights, right? Frost's able to get 900 gold there, for example. Yeah. Uh, but this is that moment where you're like, you know, you've got the three items. What does it mean? Well, unfortunately, nothing to the mm. size of Liv, who's <laughs> just so big in this game. And like, for me, that's the player that probably delivered the most. That's I would so say. dirty, this play here, Rusty. The fact that he's literally taunting death itself, somehow lives, and he's back up to 50% in a heartbeat. Completely ridiculous. Look, all things considered, it was, again, almost a 20k gold lead, which is pretty pretty nuts. Have we seen a full 20k diff yet, or is, have games just not gone that far? I think we have. Uh, I believe it was a Chiefs game where they, like, prolonged the game for 30-something minutes and, like, tried to perfect game it. Uh, I think there was, like, a just over 20, but, like, to actually do that, you have to kill the enemy champion so many times, Mac, that it adds yeah. up the difference because there's only so much standing gold on the map. That's just completely ridiculous how that's turned out. And look, big W's again found by Chiefs and that will put them back into pole position now up above Peace because Peace uh, obviously got that L today. Now let's bring Jubes back into the conversation. Jubes, what did you think of the game? Uh, it, was, it was a clean game, relatively clean. A couple of hiccups here, here and there, but I think the way that Chiefs of the Night Vision and first things first, denied jungle camps and just choked Gudo out of the game. Mm. It was fantastic. And honestly, it was just a downward like, spiral, if you're a Mammoth fan from there, right? There was nothing left. Gudo had no camps, no vision, and nothing. Yeah, very good way to uh, get one of the win conditions out of the game there for Mammoth. But who do you have down there for Chiefs on the sidelines? Uh, I have Lift. Lift, how are you, buddy? Uh, oh. Good game from you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, kind of a bit boring, but, you know, Top lane, thanks. Boring. We were looking. <laughs> we were looking like the the camera was panning top lane every like thirty seconds, and it's just a <laughs> consistent fight and all in from you two. Or maybe not a consistent fight, but just a bit of backwards and forwards trading. But yeah. you actually picked up a few solo kills this game and had quite a good performance. How does that feel for you on an individual level? Yeah, I mean it feels nice. Um, Nectar's still a rookie though, so it's not like I don't really feel like I'm outplaying him. I feel like he doesn't really understand the matchup that well, so I feel like he's kind of in tune a bit. But I mean, he's still got. I, I think he's got a good potential. And is that because Wukong's maybe like fl flavor of the month, or just in general? Um, I I, don't, I like Wukong into set. It's like like if the set goes aggressive on the Wukong, then the Wukong can just kill the set. You have to be like experienced in this matchup, in my opinion. But I think he just doesn't understand how it's played. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, you're back on top. If you didn't know, I'm sure you did because I think I saw uh, some <laughs> of you guys in Twitch chat saying thank you for thank you for winning <laughs> PGG. Probably maybe the first time I've ever seen you guys cheer for it, cheer for them. Uh, so how does that feel being back on top at the end of the Super Week? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's like kind of sad because we wanted to be peace, but we obviously dropped the game. So we're not that excited because we haven't actually beat peace yet. But like, like, it's OK. We're still first on top, but we probably don't deserve it. Now, I we've got a bounce, but quick question before we go. Who was the player that delivered? And you can say yourself. <laughs> um, I don't know, It'd be between me and Ronald, but uh, Ronald did do quite a lot of damage, so I'd give it to Ronald. And I'm getting yelled at now. What would you order? Uh, probably Subway. I love Subway. I'm a big oh, fan of okay. Subway. Oh, okay. Bit of a Subway fiend, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, all right. uh, one well, of my Thanks foods. for joining me, Liv. Thanks yeah, for awesome. joining me. Thank Fantastic you. game from you, and, and congratulations. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Well, I think that one works because um, I think we can just roll straight into the player that delivered and the DoorDash player that delivered for this game was lived. So he's going to be ordering a huge amount of Subway with that $100 DoorDash gift card. So uh, up in the top lane, really just putting on a show today, wasn't he, Rusty? Absolutely, and I can't wait to see if he gets a foot-long Italian herbs BMT. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have no idea what he orders. Uh, good performance from Lived overall, though. Uh, I think, in general, what he said in the interview was correct. That he just had mastery over the matchup, and you could kind of see that, because we were watching it a lot, right? There was a crazy amount of fighting up there. The camera naturally pans, but really good 1v1s in his favor, and it shows that if the set does go aggressive, like Lived said, he's going to be able to win that one and, and deliver some pretty strong solo kills up in top.
yeah, it's definitely worth, uh, you know, the battle that he had, although, as he mentioned, it was potentially a little bit boring for him because he thinks that the matchup just wasn't known by someone on the other side of the rift there. So uh, I think, you know, that's unfortunate, but it's it's fortunate for him because he got to get a lot of, a lot of Ws, a lot of kills on the board, and that's exactly what it's all about is getting the Ws here in the DoorDash LCO. And again, he's going to be very excited that they are on top of the leaderboard for the end of the Super Week. There is no change in that, even though we have one more game remaining. So uh, again, during this break, go and follow all the players. Go and follow all the teams. Take a screenshot at LCO. Show us that you're doing it. That's all I want from you guys. Create that content from the fans, and we'll show it just after the break. Speaking of the break, Order and Legacy coming up just after this. This is time wasted, and Swayf is taking full control of this as a result. You can look at the score sheet as the showstopper comes out, and all in between these two, oh. the haymaker, the flashes, the outplay has lifted around. round. Well, Go for lack goals. of an objective, uh, destroys Shinky. They're now going to look for another kill. Frost in a bit of a 1v2 angle, looking to try and showcase this mechanic. Get popped in a hit by the Wukong as Lift is unstoppable. But can he 